Hello and welcome to the Future of Hidden Movie Gems podcast. I am your host, Ty Spiker Christensen. You shouldn't bring her around here no more. You shouldn't bring her around. It's not safe. It's not safe. You shouldn't bring a girlfriend around here. And we got Jordan Christensen on the podcast. He's got a gun! <laughs> that made me think of like a South Park sketch. <laughs> uh, and we've got Cameron Mickle on the podcast. It's a crazy and fetching world. It's a crazy fetching world. That's crazy. two scenes where right before they get shot. Or also the go get them and do what? Let them know who's king. Dude, okay. Uh, did you not think of the quote from the gentleman? I was thinking of Matthew McConaughey's his speech. He's like, when the lion eats, he's hungry. <laughs> or when the lion is hungry, he eats. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Guys, today we are reviewing Animal Kingdom. And another yep. David Michaud. David Michaud. Michaud. My <laughs> it's not my trust me. It's not. <laughs> stop saying dude. Do you know what that is? It means <laughs> so stop saying it. <laughs> I'm sure it's Michaud. It, anyway. It's probably Michaud. But or Michaud, that's true if it's French. But is uh, it French? I gotta say, uh wait, Michaud? I, I would assume oh. so. Michaud. I was just think of Michelle. It's, I don't know it's why. It's just so Maybe. much more fun to say Mike. <laughs> Is it though? It it Keep saying it. Um, I love it. There's the show. Now yeah, there is it. a TV show. Um, Ty, do you need help? Yeah, Animal Kingdom came out. What? So 2018. <laughs> so oh my gosh. Not even close. 2010. It was. Um, uh. It was directed by David Michaud and written by him as well. And then it stars James. Frechav- Frechav- is that the guy in It Comes uh, at Night? Who? Which one is he? It's the the boy. No. Oh, okay. The boy. Yeah. No, not Joel Edgerton. Joel Edgerton. And then also star- stars Guy Pierce, Jackie Weaver, uh, Luke Ford, Sullivan Stapleton, and a couple others. The guy, the guy from Mississippi Grind. He is. So oh good. yeah, Ben Mendelson. Ben Mendelson. Jordan, yeah. see you. You did not sell this movie right, and he also spoiled one thing unintentionally because you're like, it's got the mom from. Uh, I don't remember what is it. Oh, Silver Linings Playbook um, or something. No, 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 no. She. Oh, she is in Silver Linings Playbook. Right. That's right. Or you mentioned but the other movie. She's, she's from. the mom from Five Year Engagement. Right. The only reason I like it only spoiled that for me that she had a bigger role to play is because you mentioned her out because. For some reason, if she just played a non-consequential part of the movie, I don't, I don't know why that sounds silly. Because like at the end, I was like, "That's you why Jordan crazy. mentioned her specifically." Because I was like, she played a an interesting character. So, yeah, she um, starts. You think she's like the sweet woman. You're like, oh, yeah, nice, right, right. Nice girl. Uh-huh. I knew, doing... I knew from the moment she kissed her children on the <laughs> lips. That she yeah, yeah. The jail. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kissing her children on the lips multiple times, like in sick, like sequences, jail. She's like, mwah, mwah. With the same kid. I'm like, that then, is illegal. Then smears her lipstick into their lip. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I'll give you that. Yeah, but uh, w- this movie really did something. It stirred something <laughs> inside you. me. For the first time, I like felt sorry for an Aussie. It was oh my just gosh. amazing. You know, <laughs> I feel bad for an Australian. <laughs> It I saw great. your review. You're silly. Uh, no, dude. Uh, anyway, I uh, it's it just reminded. I wish I could write something as funny as the review from Talk to Me. It was like that movie was so scary. I'm glad Australian isn't real. <laughs> 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 that just will never not make me laugh. Anyway, so what's the deal? What's the deal with Australia? Anyway, guys, this movie Australia showed is Guy Pearce even Australian or half the actors in this movie Australian? I could buy that Joel Joel uh, Edgerton is, but I doubt he is. Um, Barry, the guy from Mississippi Ground, Gr- Mississippi Grind. I'm pretty sure he is. What? He's Australian? Ben Mendelsohn? Joel Edgerton is. Yeah, you Australian. need to start. You need to start referring to him as Ben Mendelsohn because he has earned. You Joel want to be outsider? Edgerton. You want, yeah. Until Joel Edgerton time. is Australian, and is then Guy really? Pierce. Actually, guy Guy Pierce yeah, is Pierce. England. Yeah. yeah Actually, one of my wasn't. favorite roles he played was was the one with why can't I think of his? I can see his. It comes at night. No, Place no, no. I like that one. Who are you talking no, about? Mississippi Grind. Joel Edgerton. Um, Joel. Oh, Ben no. Mendelsohn. Mississippi ben Grind. Mendelsohn. Yes. Yeah. Dude, you got to get your people yeah. straight. I'm ben so confused. Mendelsohn. Yes. Ben. He. On the Mendelsohn. Yes, oh, he's in what? A Place Beyond the Pines. No, but the movie I really like. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious because he plays a similar role. He, they're both. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very similar role. Yeah. But Mississippi Grind, Place Beyond the Pines. 
He's but great. No, and he's I, also the villain in the Rogue One movie. No, but the great. the shooting, the gangster ones where they saw the sawed off shotgun. What is that one called? I can't think of it. It's Brad Pitt. Killing them softly? Was he in that Killing one? them softly. I really like him in that one too. It's a good movie. Yeah. So yeah, you're gonna have to learn his name now, jo- Jordan. Joel Edgerton or Ed Ed Edger- Ed- Edgerton? 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 Edgerton. Is Edgerton. he Edgerton. he's like the only level headed person in this, besides the main kid. But like well, he I makes thought, you no, think I that way. The... But dude, who who chastises their nephew to wash their hands? I mean, like that. That was weird. <laughs> he was teaching him because clearly he was raised in a home where he was not taught that. Okay, no, but like, anytime your hands near the... your <laughs> or your <laughs> you wash. The the the, bl- the blonde brother Darren, I thought he was pretty reasonable. Oh, I think he just kind of got dragged along. Like he was the one that was trying to tell him to not murder that teenage girl. I mean, he didn't stop That's him. True. So yeah, he yeah. Cameron's, Cameron's like, he's he like, was pretty good. He was sitting there, he's like, stop it. He throws a throw pillow at him. Stop yeah, like, killing her. So like, nice, you're nice murdering effort. her. Nice. I know. Stop murdering well, her. Well, there's no, the two like terrified. absolutely it's the animal order. loco. It's guys. The animal kingdom. Yes. Ben Mendelssohn commit because he was unhinged. So it's like, don't cross him, otherwise he kills you. But but I'm what I'm saying though is Joel, because he died so early, I was like the only like real level headed like guy that was kind of keeping everybody somewhat. Yeah together he once he was gone you knew everybody was he's the reason he's the only one that's married this kind of reminded me this kind of reminded me of like a non-funny version and like even the title suggests animal kingdom it's like who's the pecking order you know like or who's the the Mm. food chain yeah it reminded me of uh death of stalin a little bit Mm. Where, yeah, it's like kind of rising to power, but they didn't, th- there was, there was a struggle. Cause like, eventually it's like, everyone kind of rose like, okay, if, if Joel Edgerton's gone again, we're going to talk spoilers folks. So Joel Edgerton, we already did. Bam. He's gone. Like in the first act, it's crazy. That's, I was not expecting that. So this yeah. movie was very uh, surprising that regard. He's got a gun. Got a gun. Just blows him away in the freaking car. It was nuts. And yeah. uh, anyway, and then, so yeah, then you have like Craig who's like the crazy unhinged druggie. And then you have, well, everyone's a druggie. So I should probably clarify. He, did, he did, was the brother. When they were the walking up to the car to... too, they looked like missionaries. I know that's. <laughs> no, I thought the same thing. I was like, have you, <laughs> would you like to hear a message of the Lord Jesus Christ? And that they just blow him away with his gun. <laughs> have you heard the good news? It's the sound of my freaking 12 gauge to your temple. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy, dude. Ah. So, um, oh, and one other film that reminded me of is, and it, maybe it's just because I recently saw this, but Hell or High Water. It's because it, yeah. there's the unhinged brother. And I mean, I guess that's with any heist movie. There's always the one unhinged character that the just town, kind of unravels right? the town. Yeah. 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 Just, this is Jeremy Renner's character. <laughs> yeah. I love just, one character that's just like absolutely nuts. Every, so, yeah. every Scorsese movie, you know, the Joe Pesci, like, yeah, just short tempered, short fuse. And he's, and he's always like, you talk, you talk to the police. And they always kill <laughs> one of their own because they're so loyal to the gang. Yeah. You know, to the cause. They always kill one of their own. It's just always a staple of these kinds of movies. But this this did feel fresh. And the fact that I was like, oh, dang. I said, like I said, I, I, I said the fuck my heart fa- broke for family. that kid. The, I what, said the family dynamic in this was like Iron Claw meets The Godfather. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> there, yeah, the, I, their I, bond. Bit, every, hey, Cameron, with a little bit of fox catcher, you know. Yeah, it's just every, <laughs> everyone, everyone involved is gonna eventually die in the most tragic way possible. Dude, we need to do like a uh, a hierarchy of like what's the worst father? You know, you have like Darth Vader, he cut off his own Luke's hand. He's you know committed genocide. Then you have these movies where you're like, she kisses you too long. <laughs> <laughs> your aunt yeah. picks you up from kill her your bro. mother od that was the saddest thing he's just sitting there watching freaking jeopardy or deal or no deal next to his od'd mom dude this movie i was like oh this is gonna be a grim movie dude <laughs> that's the tone yeah the just opening, on the co- scene, like she's laying scene, there like, and i was like asleep? yeah I, I thought she was asleep and then they and cut, then the parabetic that was a good that was like, a good bait and switch because i was looking around the apartment like for something i'm like why and then like the MTs just come in and they're like, she's right here. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's sitting next to his dead mom. Like that is so. And he's just watching the TV while they're like, she's gone. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. she's. I mean, I I suppose he already knew and yeah, his mom was a junkie and everything. Yeah. And and I'm sure she'd had a couple of scares. So I wouldn't be surprised also if he thought that like, maybe she was just going to come back, like, and be fine. Like, oh yeah, she does this a lot. And then that's true too. Oh man. Because it, yeah, it, 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 it could have been one of those, those things where he's just like, yeah, take her away. I'll see her in like a, a couple of days once she's like gotten IVs run Sobered through. Sobered up. 
yeah. yeah and it's like no she's not coming like, back oh no and he's she's like gone. i told him i was 18 and i gotta plan the funeral and everything like oh that was heartbreaking just like a kid thrust into severe i mean like traumatizing adulthood you know well like, and talk that, about that a great introduction to the tattooed psychopath when he's just and that that's the part that reminded me of hell or high water was when the, that guy pulls up next to him he's like the light's green and then he just <laughs> gives him a gun the car tell him yeah tell him what's up and he's like tell him what's good and he's like gets out and points the gun he's like oh man whoa whoa <laughs> dude whoa. they they're not so oh my gosh i'm assuming i'm assuming it's illegal to carry a gun in australia just because every single person that had a gun it was on well cameron site the gun that shot. they show in this movie is a spider repellent in this because the... <laughs> <laughs> you see a... there's spiders yeah you I see, see the spiders in australia um, they need a freaking pistol for freaking freaking no, but, eight late freaks man but it has to be illegal because the cops were not asking any questions. There was no like, oh, is that um license? Well, to be fair, like, though, you... I, I like you, Cameron, was like, oh, that's weird. I don't know the laws of how cops are supposed to. But then it is revealed that these were dirty cops. Oh, dirty well, yeah. Times. I know. But still, like to do that in broad daylight is kind of outrageous activity. I'm, just I'm not like... blackmailing you. I just think you should know it would be bad for everybody if... Yeah, bro. I Gosh, wanted was to, allowed to test. I wanted her to die so bad, but I know. Well, I it's like, kind of his line at the grocery store was great foreshadowing. But, like, hey, you're gonna be miserable one day. I know you like try to distance yourself, but it's gonna come back. He's like, I. What did he? Say? He like. Uh, he's not bet, even he's a said, I bet threat. that feeling. He's, he's like, it's gonna start unraveling. He's like, it's, I bet that feeling follows you every second. It of follows day. you every second. That was great. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Oh my gosh. Dude. Then he goes home. I literally I thought, like, like oh, first... he's gonna, he's gonna shoot him. He's gonna fall in the grill. I thought for sure Ben Mendelsohn was gonna meet his end with Josh. And then, like ten seconds later, I wasn't surprised because I was like, oh yeah, that's. I knew it was happening. I was like, I knew. Yeah, for I had sure. no idea. I had oh, no idea did? either. That, how did you figure that's that so out? That's so funny. No, like immediately when he was testifying and everything, and they were making him say that stuff. I was like, well, it's either Jackie. He's gonna find out that Jackie lied, or or you know, I thought he just knew his place in the food or, chain. I thought he was like, I know this is where I I'm not because guy Pierce is it? Wait, Pierce, right? Yeah. He yeah, he Pierce. told him he's like, know your place. Like you won't survive. And I was like, yeah, he found he he learned. Like I'm at the bottom of the food chain. Well, see, but he's still well, been testified. Done... Yeah, go ahead, Cam. See, what I would have done is I would have essentially told my family that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm helping you out. I'm gonna fin like finesse them, and then I'm telling the district attorney like they're doing all these things to try to get me to commit perjury. <laughs> this is exactly what they're gonna their defense is gonna be. You have to fetch and protect me. <laughs> they're, they're, they're gonna they're know like, you were a rat, Cameron. They're gonna be like, I didn't squeal. Did you squeal? And then they're gonna come up behind you with a freaking wire no, piano no, wire. I'm sending <laughs> everyone in my I'm sending everyone in my family to jail and never gonna. See them ever again that's cameron they have family ties outside of jail they come and kill you they send hitmen after you and yeah did you, you see cameron he almost got blown away by the freaking cops Dude, yeah when what's it called when the cops uh when like witness the, protection like, dude well, yeah, like, hey, like, man, for this, they all just surrender right away i'm not dying I'm like, for a little kid i'm not dying for a kid no one of them was like let's throw him out there and then the other one's like i'll take care of myself i was like <laughs> what the fuck these guys are really he did cold, he dude. said i'll shoot him myself <laughs> And then, and then Guy Pierce is like, why'd you run? And I'm like, maybe because the own people that were supposed to protect me but were see, conspiring I, to murder me. I, I like that you said that, Cameron. Yeah, he was naive in that regard. Because, yeah, he, because there's a great scene where the one, there's so many scenes that are happening right under Guy Pierce's nose. There's the, the FBI guy that puts the gun right to Joshua's head in the car Gosh. right before he testifies. That was so unnerving. And then there's this scene where, um, uh the, the detective he like wakes up and i can't remember what he says to him josh wakes up on the bed and he's sitting there and he's like serial killer much watching yeah, he puts the gun he's... on the side and he's like do i scared? scare you Am I, yeah, yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> he's just just messing with this kid dude. yeah josh it's like go for the gun him. like he wanted him he was like yeah, he wanted to make a movie he's like, go I'll for the beat gun you to death yeah, yeah yeah that's exactly what it was and it was like yo and guy pierce is like genuinely trying to do talk, the right thing and you're like talk about a lot of a lot of people that watch people while they sleep the uh Oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget his name. Ben, right? He's Michael looking ben at Anderson. he's looking at the girl oh, while she's sleeping. Dude, dude that dude, gave me such a lust. horrific. Yeah, that was so horrific, dude. <laughs> See, that's when I knew I was in for a treat. I was like, oh, I was so guy. worried. I was like, did Jordan? I was like, don't tell me there's in here, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> and there would have been if the freaking boyfriend didn't walk didn't in wake up times. Yeah, any second later. Yeah, They're pretty horrific, but. Yeah, yeah, Ben Mendelsohn's character is so, it's so, so creepy, sleazy, just so scummy, scummy and sleazy, skeezy, if that's a word.
Dude, and then so just guys, throwing her body back in the dumpster. I'm like, that's your plan to get rid of the body? Yeah. He left I, love, I, lo- I love the the call, though. Reminds me a lot of, um, like, when he uh, – we probably should get into what it was like watching him, but when he um Great. W- when he called him, it reminded me of um L and Light in Death Note when he calls him and he's like, "Oh, did you need this?" Uh, are, when he calls, he's the, like, "Why were you calling Misa?" And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> "Like, I just love that moment when he's like trying to call his girlfriend." And then oh he yeah, and he walks outside. Yeah, he hears it ring, and then you see him running around the corner. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like, I know she didn't give that to you willingly. Yeah. Well, because he found her him. earring or something first, right? Yeah, I found a keychain or something key, from her, yeah, from or her. something. I can't remember. It was it was something that belonged to her on the. the and he lied to him, so you're like, you knew he's like, oh crap, yeah. they figured yeah. it out. Yeah, she. Yeah, he goes there. It's like, is she here? And she's like, no, she didn't come back. Is she with you? And he's like, dude, talk about reaction in time. Where he's like, no, everything's fine. He goes to the bathroom and just has a total breakdown uh, and leaves yeah. again. And like, then he gets a call uh, and he's like, dude, sh- that, see, that's why other, the other reason why I think the blonde guy should be spared, bro, is because, see, he even called him and be like, dude, he's coming to your house. Him, yeah, dude, yeah, he did warn him. <laughs> he, dude, no, but Cameron, again, he was why there are you asking watching that? Ben Mendelsohn murder his girlfriend and then he's like hey they're coming for you and he's gonna kill your girlfriend's no, see, dad and mother and no, brother see, like the thing the thing is to me too is i'm like why are you asking the dad and why are you not explaining the situation say um so my uncle is gonna probably come over and try to murder me how about we hop in and drive away or like let me take I, your car i would i would argue it's because he's like maybe i still have a chance with your daughter but it's like he knows that she's dead right maybe he doesn't know for sure well i don't i think he doesn't want to say anything because he was worried he would get killed too i think he doesn't want to get more people involved the more people he gets involved the more people but but then like these people are like involved in the situation with zero and then just rams his car into them and and he's like he's like oh this dude just hit me and then the kid gets just sprints out the car like give me the fudge out of here all these witnesses dude ben nettles is like climbing out of the car like i'm gonna freaking kill you you little whelp it's so scary and he doesn't say anything but he just like they like smash into each other and they just look at each other through the door and they're like trying to get out of the car oh my gosh it's so scary yeah and he chases him too like there's a great scene where he like looks at him he's like boy he like runs after him he's like, he like runs and he climbs on top of the freaking garage and bolts like yeah <laughs> just like an abuse okay. i don't know i'm laughing it's so sad but it's like josh I was is curious. like yeah. why, why did they not shoot him like what when that cop had the, sh- the chance why did he not shoot him was it just like, was it kind of like, a I think it was thing? implied that he didn't get a clear shot. You're right. Cameron, the it, way it was shot, it didn't look, it was close. Like he was I, ready to shoot him. At well, because back. from and I, watching it, this is my second or third time. Uh, yeah. it, I noticed this time. Cause I, I wanted the same thing. Cameron, like he could have shot him, but it was because earlier when he was talking to the lady, like he did not want to do it in the first place. Yeah. And so he, hesitated. he hesitated. So he hesitated. And yeah. that was the one window where he was like, he wasn't even a hundred percent in it. Like he was going to go do it. But then when he saw a chance where he's like, he's slipping away, like he hesitated for a second and that's when he got away. Got yeah, that's okay. kind of what I, that's, what I assumed. Good. What I assumed was the fact that he was like a part of it, but he didn't want to be the one to pull the trigger. He just wanted to be one that raided the house. Exactly. Said, yeah, I was involved, but he didn't I tried, want to be yeah. conscious yeah. of murdering him. That's a, that's a good point too. Yeah. Cause he's like, oh, the snap, rest the of those f- were like, Oh, I don't give a f- about killing some kid, <laughs> dude. I know, like, dude. Freaking guy. Uh, Pierce is you want to tell them twice to murder some seventeen-year-old? Dude, apparently. guy Pierce is the only honest guy. It's probably because he's had a hard life raising an autistic daughter and or Down syndrome daughter and uh, a wife. I don't know. We don't know much about his home life, but he's like the only decent guy in this movie. You see him this, playing with his daughter. It's like very I've ever sweet rooted for him. Besides Memento, and even <laughs> Memento, you find out and you're like, uh, you, you root for him. Am backwards. I rooting for him? <laughs> yeah, no, but <laughs> but like because he plays the best villains, like in Count of Monte Cristo. Oh my gosh. Yeah, guy Pierce, dude. Yeah, very rarely does he play the good you guy. Have, I have everything he's, that he's like. I have everything. The villain in Iron Man Three. I shouldn't yeah. want to be you. <laughs> I always love in Kyle Ayers, uh, you know, never seen it podcast. His father thinks Guy Pierce is Brad Pitt, which is really, really funny, especially in the movie <laughs> Memento. Christopher Nolan did want Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio no to play way. the part, but yeah, he had Guy Pierce play Memento because that's that's who he could afford at the time, I guess. <laughs> or maybe, it was maybe a the only thing, but yeah, or, yeah, yeah, either a Ford or still maybe... his second film, yeah, because yeah. they he had done following or whatever. But anyway, I just find that funny where. 
Kyle yes, so for my my first bit main Brother. big film, I'm gonna do with a, a really easy to grasp concept. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like this is down to earth. So let, we should get into this movie real briefly. Like, to, uh, what was it like watching it for the first time? We watched it for the podcast. I just watched it for the first time uh, last night and and today. I rewatched some of my favorite scenes. Ben Mendelsohn's great. So yeah, I I like watching this movie. And um, yeah, it like I and I was joking about like feeling something, but I was like, for the first time in my life, I feel like I I genuinely feel like empathetic for like the poor victims of like lower intelligence in crime families. Like these poor kids don't stand a chance. Like, like they could do great in school. They could have a great girlfriend and other supportive out at family. But like when your uncle murdered your girlfriend, your high school girlfriend, like what chance do you have of growing up in any semblance of a normal life? Like it's just so broke my heart. And I remember thinking like, Holy crap, I am a lot more sympathetic to crime families. And, and especially like it, not to, the lions of the food chain right but the animal kingdom the poor vultures or weevils that are that lower on the animal food chain that that have to pick at the scraps of the the remains of their life you know it's just in pieces so anyway well and was, it, uh, it's amazing how smart the cops are of just like um you know he held the kid for extra hours to make the rest of them suspicious of him sure. and basically turn them on each other it's just right. so sad. But it's almost sad because yeah, because it's yeah. like well, this is the only point to get the bad guy, and and we're gonna offer this kid up as a sacrifice in a sense. I love yeah. how he explained so it to sad. him, and they they still did not comprehend it. He was like, they held me in there with nothing or whatever, and they're like, oh, maybe maybe he's lying. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, they did not <laughs> believe like, him. He right literally away. explained to you that they're trying to get it in your head, and they're like, I don't know. <laughs> just That's like, just what you'd like us to think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like. <laughs> This is like when we play werewolf, though. This is like when we play werewolf as a family. We're all like, yeah, you'd like to think that, wouldn't you? Yeah, for real. I know that lawyer. We would all kill each other. Do the lawyer doing coke and unbuttoning his shirt. Dude, he's a psycho. Dude, he's a creeper, man. (laughs) He kind of reminded me of Jordan Belfort, just like that. Like wealthy, but like willing to just do like super morally questionable things without even like yeah, kind of like a like, oh, kind of yeah, like a, a an Aussie version of uh, Bob Odenkirk's uh, Better Call Saul. Oh, Better Call Saul. Well, thing, I love yeah. when they start talking about who took the car, and he's like, I- "I'm not hearing this," and he walks out of the room. <laughs> 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 he's just oh, he's such a sleazy character because it's like yeah. he knows what actually happened. Yeah, yeah, but, but he's got to defend them. Yeah, he can definitely piece it together. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> yeah, right. So um, Dude, this is David's first film. How crazy is that? Was that right? Yeah. So this is one thing that, okay, you go ahead, Jordan, with your, like, what was like watching it for the first time, rewatching it for the podcast? Well, it, because of this movie, this is when I became obsessed with David and I went on that David Micho spree and just watched all his films. And that's when I finally rewatched The King and realized, holy crap, this is a masterpiece. Because I, when I first watched The King, I kind of skimmed through it or fell asleep. I can't remember. But I'm but just so boring. glad. I well yeah I was just like this is really British slow. way of talking. But no, I'm just like this is really slow. And now after and they watching... said it, it, it biscuit in it, it beans and toast, isn't it? Oh and a bottle of water. Anyways, like so, I don't understand these people. Th- this film, like, I mean, propelled my love for David's work, and I'm just like now, like following him and watching his movies. And this is my favorite. No, ah, no, the King's my favorite of his films, and then this is second. But gosh dang, his work is so good. And this film, after watching it a second time, made my top hundred. So I just really love this movie a lot. Because nice. it it just has a lot of my favorite elements. I love movies about people uh coming apart and unraveling, like uh super dark times. I just love when everybody starts turning on each other. It's it's very fun. And like Ty said, you feel that a lot of sympathy Jordan, for Jordan those. just loves high stress heist movies. <laughs> I know yeah. this movie is so high stress. This like, is literally, I, this is so much like um, dragged across concrete too, where it's just like so yeah. high stress, and, and <laughs> your stomach turns. Like, I even on rewatch because I'm like, I know what's coming, and I just like feel so bad for this poor kid and his girlfriend, and like what he has to go through because he's like, I have nowhere to go. Like when he comes back to the late the the grandma's house or mom and she he's knocking and he's talking to her and you're like oh my gosh he went right back to the wolf's den like you're yeah. literally talking to the devil right now like and he's like i i can't go anywhere like i'm safe nowhere <laughs> and you're like do not go back to her but 
he he made a plan. He was pretty and, smart. He was pretty yeah. smart to me in public. I was like, okay. I mean, you're not technically safe in this world because fetching the cops will shoot. He's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like from now on, dude. I, I had seven. I had seven other cop witnesses. I'm like, doesn't that look a little suspicious that seven of you pulled up on a dude in a like a parking lot and he just, and he whipped out a gun and thought he could take you all. I'm like, it well, would be. Uh, I don't think they're interested in investigating because yeah, they, and well, and they I all. I mean, that's why they had other ones because they needed a certain amount of witnesses, quote unquote, and and all of a sudden, and they probably gave him a fake gun, not a fake gun, but like a gun after they shot him. So they gave him a wedding gun, them. like the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. a gun. Oh, it was a. It was a you don't want to a... die with a little sissy gun. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to die with a. Right, well, I mean, gun. like seriously, like people, yeah. Uh, anyway. Police brutality, police brutality. Or is is that is it in Goodfellas Holy where shit. they're like, he's got a gun and it's just it it was the sandwich and it glistened in the dark and they get shot. Is that the is that sandwich casino? glistened? <laughs> no, because it was it wrapped up in tinfoil. So when it was dark oh. out, it looked like a gun. Is, is that, that Goodfellas or is that um casino? Could be. Okay. It could I be one of those casino. two. Movies. I, I don't remember that in Goodfellas. I don't remember in Goodfellas. It's so probably a casino it. then because they, they show up and they the cops show up and they just start mowing them down. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a sub sandwich. That's sub great. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking of Boondock Saints with the scene where he's eating that sandwich and takes out like half of the. Oh, he opens it up and there's just like <laughs> one piece of meat on it. <laughs> That's what it was. He doesn't take it off. It comes empty. That's right. Yeah, and he opens it. There's nothing in it. <laughs> he like looked at it. He like it's probably the prop they gave him, and he improv. Yeah, it. you know that's so great, dude. Cameron, what about you watching this movie? Um, yeah, watching it for the pod wasn't the first time, and similar to the king, I think like, and obviously the king, he's kind of mastered his craft, but I think David Michaud is like so great at show don't tell and it it's so obvious that he is a writer because i think i'm assuming he was a writer or has written more than he's directed what after i was looking at his imdb okay. and um it's very obvious that he was it's so interesting to see like where certain directors kind of started like it was fun watching um fall guy because it's like the director started as a stunt coordinator and so it's just fun how you see <laughs> yeah it was all right um i don't like it um and it was just interesting seeing like how his skill as a writer like translates to being a director because his character work is just very good and like there's a lot of subtleties that um you just learn a lot about a character like i just love like in the opening scene like ty was talking about you just learn so much about this like circumstance and situation like one you see the kid is unaffected by the fact that his mother is od next to him leading to a bunch of different like um inferences that you can make about like the whole family life situation and then you assume that there's no father in the picture because there's no one else in the house and then um and that he's used to it because he's so unaffected by it and then and then you also like when he's calling the grandma you like he's like do you remember where the house is like subtle things like that that yeah. it's so obvious that he is a writer because it's so well put instead of saying like grandma you haven't been here in seven years like, like a tommy uh, wise script <laughs> yeah exactly like do, well, i did not like, hit her <laughs> like 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 certain scripts like that a lot of times can just be like oh i'm so me... glad i have you as my best friend and i love lisa so much <laughs> and like because certain scripts will make sure like oh make sure the audience knows that the grandma has not been there in a while but it's like this is it's like let's hope that the cra or that the audience but is also intelligent but and yeah and, her and, and also like read in between the lines intelligently make it so the characters aren't saying something out of character right because exactly. i always watch for that one of the funny things i found myself watching lately cameron is just watch the first time they introduce a character's name every single movie watch for it because i do every time hey i uh alan it's been a long time since mom died you know it's yeah like, yeah i always wait for those like, i'm they like no they both know they're siblings. They both know mom's dead. But like, yeah. I almost like it when they just say mom would have been really proud. You don't need to yeah. or something like that. That would have been fine. Cause then, yeah, and you then know, they're walking okay, away and like, Alan, hand me that. Cause yeah. then it's like, Oh yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a, hey, understandable. You. Like you're trying yes. to get their attention. Yeah. Or, or <laughs> even like a phone call or something, but watch for it in movies because you, you'll know right away. You're like, that was well done. Or a hundred percent. What are you doing? What are you doing here? <laughs> what are and, we doing and, here? What's and, going on here? What's going on here? For me, the biggest, the one, for me, for me, the biggest thing is What's just going on here? with, uh, I think, setting and history of, like, it's so obvious who's a good writer based on, like, the way that they show history. 
and I can kind of just get right into like my two favorite things because I think like his writing it's so subtle and yet you learn so much and like that's what I love I think he really understands just like relationship dynamics which it like if you are a good writer there's a lot of things that you can show with very like little like even just people interacting and kind of seeing like you I know like a lot of the writings that he has that are like the inaudible dialogue where it's like look at him like slightly be nervous around him just like the interactions you see with the siblings you just know like kind of who's the alpha who's like kind of nervous all the time like like you can just tell that the the blonde brother um is not like as invested that darren like you can it's so obvious that he's kind of like this is the family gig so this is what i do yeah and you can tell like who's more like yeah i love this well it's just like and the tattoo guy is just kind of dumb and like he's just following yeah um, craig yeah yeah it just like well, well and how illogical he is like it's so like that's what i love you just see like he's like oh he's just like starts to freak out and like even his like mannerisms you can just tell he's like manic and like when the guy comes <laughs> you over, got a liar like, so a freaky liar. guy yeah and i'm like and he's like they might have wired you when you and he's like uh. <laughs> and he's like am, am i the rat <laughs> like he's you can just tell like and learn so much about their like the person's internal dialogue without them having to like verbalize it and so that's just like that my first favorite thing i was just super impressed with that and um and then the second favorite thing i kind of talked about this in um uh, like earlier and then also in my letterbox review i just talked about how i think they show like the complexities of family relations i said obviously this is to the extreme but um i just love that they kind of show like like jordan talked about it's like I don't have anywhere else to go. And and that's what I thought about too at the end of the sh- movie. I'm like, after he shot his brother, it's like, I love that the family's not like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Like, like they kind of, they just like accept it. It's just like, yeah, he was kind of a terrible person. It was kind of the reason that like, we lost like three of some of the most important people in our lives. And it's just like, well, and then, th- and then the kid's probably going to go to jail like for the rest of his life for murder. And then, so it's just going to be the manipulative psycho mom and the blonde brother and you're just like darren you're just like this is quite the family mm-hmm. and i, I think and they can passionately that. share kisses you know for the rest yeah, of their lives yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure the, the, the prison guard saw it, they'd be like uh-huh what I, oh, no, okay, no, 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 okay. Yeah, no. Cameron. They, they come over and they, they arrest Joshua and they see her kissing her son and they arrest her too. <laughs> okay, talking about Cameron, great show, don't tell, and pro- implications of things. <laughs> the implications. The implications. <laughs> um, because of the implications. Because of the implication. Um, what is that from? Okay. <laughs> always from, sunny in always Philadelphia. Sunny Philadelphia. Because <laughs> we're not going to do anything to him because of the implications. <laughs> <laughs> anyways um so there's a moment and i'm curious as to what your guys thoughts are i'm curious did the brother use the blonde haired brother was he using him to like get by in prison like was he like or something um mm. because his brother's sitting there all like scared like and the mom's like what are you doing to him in there and like what's happening talk to me and he's like all scared like i bet the brother well, asking, he's definitely getting <laughs> that's a, a for sure <laughs> That is the look of somebody who's being <laughs> and get, it, get me out of here, bro. That yeah, because like, I bet that brother. S- I know that I mean, sounds horrible. Whether or not he but... was that dude was definitely getting because he had that look on it in his eyes of like, <laughs> help me. Yeah, I was just like, oh my. Because yeah. the other guy, he can he can get by on his own, obviously. Like it's the other guy that you know. He's insane. Yeah, yeah dude, he can the... run in the desert without flip flops on, dude, with a shotgun, just a straight line, middle of the desert. That was nuts, dude. I know. I was like, um, so you see how it's all flat ground and they're in a yeah. vehicle? They got these long range pistols and you've got this short range shotgun. He's just running straight out. I don't I'm know like, what he's doing. Is that our best decision? <laughs> that was so nuts, illogical. Dude. It was so no, but also, dude, the, the mom is maybe the only person that can compete with the craziest in the family. Because I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it looks like a clear winner with Ben, but the mom tries her hardest to, when she's just like, I'm never going to see the kid again. So I might as well try to keep the only family that I have. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> she's what? like, let's face it. You know, I can never love my nephew as much as I love my son. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She was even, like, they even said an interesting character line where it's like, she just liked to be around well, that, the boys or something like wherever they're the stuff. She just wanted to hang around and yeah, you're just that poor woman, you know, broken for sure. But, you know, again, saying a lot without, 
uh, she had it tough. She was divorced three times and was beaten by a previous husband or whatever. It's like, you don't need to know. She just, she's a broken person. And you, you think she, she's very, very kind and very loving at the beginning. I would have thrown Turns a gun on her. She got a gun. Verse. <laughs> 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 but I think it's it's a good use of her character because, again, it starts off very caring because you're like, oh, like it's good that he has this aunt that's yeah. pretty understanding oh, yeah. and pretty <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I, at the beginning, who didn't think that? Yeah, she I thought that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I was yeah. like, because she answered, she's like, oh, yes, you can come stay here. Yeah. Just... Even when she showed up, I was like, yeah, she looks well, like even... a weathered person. That well, there was even a moment too where he, he protects her. He's like, hey, don't, because remember she's hitting the sun and he looks like he's about yeah. to do something to her. And then the sun stand up and he's like, hey, don't, don't hurt her. And then luckily Guy Pierce shows up right before something might have happened. Yeah, he's about to run out the door from being getting beaten. And he's like, <laughs> everything all right in here? See, yeah, there were three scenes. Like, I was like, there was another one where he was being chased. And yeah, Guy Pierce shows up. Yeah. And he's like at the front door. He's, he's like, like everything okay? wait, what's up, Josh? What's what's going on? You, you going fine. somewhere? He's just like, we're fine. fine. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh, I'm sure Ben is look like a normal situation. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just, we we're just chatting. Yeah. Just chatting. I'm like, I'm like puffing. That's why I was like, full sprinting towards the door <laughs> <laughs> and swung it open. <laughs> what well, was, was there? Good. Okay, I'm just curious because uh, I've forgotten because I've seen it so long ago. When did you guys know this kid was in trouble? Like with this family, was it right at the get go or? What do you like, mean that he was in trouble? Like, well, like, was, do you think uh, he's so, probably like, so? Die? My the biggest scene was just obviously Ben Mendelsohn putting his girlfriend to bed. I was like, this is there's a tragedy, okay. and then it was even amplified when the brothers like dip, ditch your girlfriend, like don't mm -hmm. have her around. You don't okay. need. Her. I'm like, I'm like, she's dead or she's this, she's that. Like, I I knew that something was gonna happen, but or I even thought maybe they were gonna do like the uh, he would have to implicate her into the crimes. I also thought that, and she might get hurt in the crossfire. Do you think but she would have lived? More do, you, needless. do you think she would have lived if he didn't break up with her? Because I think she did. I mean, she did the drugs because if she ever went over to his house, not Ben Mendelsohn drugs, was bro. ready to. Yeah, he did the drugs to her, bro. But it's she fun. was. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. Come here. Come here. It's yeah, just a little bit of heroin. Come consent. here. Consent. There was there was zero rejection, it's but fun. there was zero consent. Yeah, he was just like, oh yeah. He's I think she was kind of mortified. He gave her the drugs so fast. That was nuts. That was nuts. I'm sure she was kind of mortified, but also yeah. wanted to kind of understand her nephew. She was so naive. She's like, I couldn't possibly be harmed in any way, like majorly harmed. Uh, and again, when an know. adult comes to you like that, it's like, it's fun. It's fun. Just do it. Like, like if a guy offered you a drink or a drug, like you don't know the implications of it. Like, even if you're like, well, she, well, and she's already done other drugs too. So nope, that was a lie. Well, that no, 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 lie. not, not heroin, oh. but she had done Coke. Didn't she? I could have swore. Marijuana. marijuana okay never mind <laughs> but then and then the lawyer is like yeah well he says like maybe she's used she used drugs maybe before and he goes is that true you can is this is me talking now and she's like he's like no he's like oh just keep it to the truth yeah you know they're like keep keep part of the truth you know they want to make it yeah oh, so sad but I know. anyway um yeah there was only one death that uh, surprised me i think after Joel Edgerton gets shot in the face point blank at the grocery store. I remember thinking, oh, like there's going to be all kinds of assassinations. <laughs> um, so the, I would say my favorite thing about this movie is like there's just nothing that replaces good storytelling, like good storytelling, gripping characters, not two dimensional and show don't tell. And I think this just works so well because the movie just moves along at a wonderful pace. Like even though it was like an hour and 50, it's almost two hours. It felt like 90 minutes because it didn't seem to drag on. And even the parts where it probably felt like it would be dragging on, there was good story and good character moments that elevated it. So I never felt like it dragged on. And the movie just kind of moves and it keeps you guessing because you're like, oh, kind of like watching a train wreck because you realize it's it's not that kind of movie with any happy ending. There's there's no happy endings to be had in this movie. Yeah. Not one. Well, this this <laughs> movie except, along uh, with like No Country for Old Men, I think show, I think the power of, well, one, like, um, like control and uh, mm -hmm. like essentially just like the idea of like um, I'm trying to think of the word I can't think of the word but like not showing the like all the gunshots sometimes or just even like like showing the blood split bat like spatter is on honestly sometimes like scarier and then same thing with like because I didn't realize how much I hate slow mo gunshots until like Zach I see Snyder. how. <laughs> yeah just i just think of like, moon, like, Bert one like occasionally two. it can be all right if it's like because i feel like quentin sometimes uses it for comedic effect but i feel like if you're trying to drive home like the 
oomph of like a gunshot, I think it's so much more powerful if it's just like a split second. Cause then it's like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Cause that's what's like so many of the deaths in this movie happen. You're like, wait, what? What? And I'm you like, have to watch it twice. It drives, and I think yeah, it I watched Joel Edgerton's like, two or three times. I was like, wait, why? <laughs> like, I was like, what? You just killed off one of your stars. What just happened? And I'm so I, I think that drives home the movies. message more of like just how sudden it is and like yeah. the quickness of it. Because I think sometimes when you like drag it out or it's like there's a shootout, then it like it kind of almost makes it feel less real. And so when or it's just could, like boom, you could like, show it twice, what? you know, in like movie casino, you know. <laughs> so I'm being blown up <laughs> two times. <laughs> Are you talking about the I'm intro kidding. and then the end? Yeah, yeah. It's just oh. like you're probably wondering how I got here. You know, it almost basically had that moment where they freeze framed it and he's like on fire in his car bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I love that in movies. I'm I was actually cutting a, a family Christmas movie together and I just have a random a guy being blown out of a building and it's like freeze frame starts the Bob O'Reilly song from the who. And it's like, you're probably wondering how I got here. Yep. That's me. You know, like it's my name is Earl also did it, but anyway, it just makes me laugh every time I hear it. So uh, you're right, Cameron, less is more, or even the off screen deaths or even just, um, just abrupt deaths, right? Restraint like, is the word that I was looking for. You, like a director restraint. using restraint with, restraint. Like, with violence, I think just drives it so much like more powerfully like that's why for me zodiac that the stabbing scene is so horrific because of how much restraint there is otherwise like where you so rarely see violence happening where it's like you'll see like someone get shot but you're only seeing like the person getting shot you're not seeing like the shooter or you're only seeing the shooter and, and mm. like the stabbing scene is the only scene that you're seeing and you're kind of even you're not even really seeing the knife stab you're like you can see it in like your your mind's filling in the gaps but you're just seeing like the person's reaction and just like a something moving in the back and you're like oh well, have you been watching the psycho shower scene, Cameron? Has that? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's what you're describing because the when, knife never makes contact. Yeah, anyway. Oh, when you show restraint to it, it uh, like it's much. Uh, you don't become desensitized because if you show too much, like you know, by the end of Terrifier, you're like numb to it because there's so much gore. Uh, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I was gonna say yeah, for all of you that because everyone's watching boys. Terrifier. <laughs> or just even watching, yeah, like the boys are like, oh, shock humor, and I'm like. And I know. After a while, I I do become numb. Like, just heads yeah. exploding left and right. Well, yeah, because yeah. the, op the opening scene spoiler is like just his girlfriend just getting obliterated, where he's just <laughs> holding his hands and he's just like, "I'm like, what am I watching, bro?" Yeah. Flash is turning her into roadkill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and much more impactful when it's like, yeah. Can you help me out with cancer? <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, would you recommend Animal Kingdom? I like this one. If you like the movies like The Town, uh, you like any heist Heller. movie, but Heller High, Heller High Water, yeah, very good comparison, yeah. Jordan. Or, or so. if you like 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 family kind of like family, family drama. drama. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm like at an all time oh, high. Guys, yeah. It's almost like Family Matters, or you know, like just, uh, just Full House. <laughs> Just, With just imagine guns. every like intrusive thought you've had towards your sibling, and then imagine that when you're at your angriest after they stole like your toy, that someone put a twelve gauge in your hand, and then you're like, eh. and it was encouraged in that household, and your mother kisses you uncomfortably long. Yeah, yeah. you have all no, and the then makings. Your, your aunt That's... kisses you on the lips multiple times <laughs> and holds it. So it is aunt. I, I kept saying grandma, so it's aunt. No, yeah, but yeah, see, yeah. I don't, I don't know because. No, it is grandma. It's his grandma, but it's the other boy's mom. I think but it's your sister. He... I think it's aunt. It? No, maybe they I'm just call I... auntie. Maybe in Australia, they're always like auntie, and it's just like a <laughs> Yeah, because well, she said your your mom. Like, do you know why you, me and your mom never spoke? And there, there was a, like it seemed like there was a decent. That's age not gap. like oh your mom, but because that's like me and like if I were talking to one of no, I know, your I know, but, kids, yeah, I'd be like, you know what, I, me and but your I don't know because spoke. of yeah, the age gap. I feel like doesn't mean anything, dude. It, she doesn't know no age. She's counting no age, man. She's no, because like, he says he's like, kids. oh, that's really weird. Don't call me uncle. This and that was the son of her. So that's his grandma. That his grandma. It's his grandma because he's like, yeah, remember, cause, don't cause, call me uncle because no they're the same age. There's no way the brothers are kissing their sister like that. That's insane. Because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, not, remember, it's no, not their sister. No, she says she says my only daughter. She after yeah. the fight, she says I, my only daughter. Yeah. So that is okay. grandma. Yeah. Yeah. 
So grandma Damn. kissing him on the lips, but then the other dude's kissing their mom on the lips multiple times. Well, it, it's not, I've seen that in a lot of movies where parents kiss their kids. And I'm like, why on the lips? Like, I don't understand that. It's, it's so called. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It was nice all... one, Cameron. But <laughs> it, it fit it's in Dune. Dude, kisses you on the lips, Cameron? <laughs> dude, dude. What did you say? What? <laughs> no, I was... I was actually quoting Hot Fuzz, but it didn't land. It was just like, your dad sells apples, Andy, and raspberries. I don't know why it doesn't mean like, because you're like, you're like, oh, dude, that's disgusting. I'm like, your mom kisses you on the lips, Karen. It was just a joke. <laughs> you're the same mom, idiot. Yeah, but mine's smarter. So anyway, keep going. What have you seen lately and what are we looking forward to? Yeah, what, 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 what's good? What have you guys been watching? Dude, I watched an amazing movie that we're going to have to review. It's called First Reformed. It's good. Watch that movie. It, you say it's pretty good, dude. It's freaking amazing. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, Cameron, uh, so I cannot uh... stress how subtle this movie is, even though like I almost thought like I was thrown for a loop. I was like, oh, I don't think I like where this is headed. And then I was like, oh, but I really like where this is headed. You know what it reminded me of, Jordan? It reminded me of St. Maude. St. Maude. I thought you would a say that. A lot of St. Maude. If you like that one, please you watch. You told me another one. Yeah. You yes. Told me one. Um, what was it? Uh, I'll look oh it up. I, I know you texted me. You you put it on my letterbox review, but I, I will yeah. check it out because I'm in the mood for those kind of movies. So we're going to have to do it on the podcast, but that'll be my next pick. Ethan Hawke, Amanda Siegfried, I think. First Reformed is great, Cam. I think you're going to like it too. But again, very subtle. Calvary. Calvary. Okay. Yeah, check it out. Cavalry or Calvary? C- Calvary. Calgary? <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> I, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Calvary. Calvary. It, it's got the guy from uh, Banshees of Inishin. Annie Sharon. Annie uh, Sharon. Brendan Gleason? Yeah, Brendan Gleason. Okay, nice. Mad-Eye Moody. Mad-Eye Moody. Yeah, he's literally a priest and does the same thing, but I, I personally thought- Wait, have I, I seen this movie? I feel like I've seen I don't think so, movie. but I think it's better than First Reformed. Priest. Personally, I want to hear your thoughts yeah. if you if you I'll don't like it, it if you don't like it, it yeah. yeah if you don't like it better we'll do first reformed but i think you'll oh yeah like, like yeah between the two that'll be fun we'll watch and then do a double feature like yeah or triple just throw saint mod did we talk about saint we did that? we did do saint mod because okay. i it was just me and you because i don't know well, it's kind of well, so i didn't know this love the ending might be the too much bodies for lies and the, is that what it's called oh yeah same director of saint mod yeah and I, I was like, oh, was that movie any good? I didn't see it, but I haven't uh, seen it. But I've, I'm interested to see that. Maybe Red Letter Media just talked about it in their newest video. Yeah, and I, yeah, that's right. That's where I heard it from too. Because, um, but anyway, like I like how they watch these movies. I'm like, Late Night with the Devil and uh, another movie that they reviewed. I'm like, well, oh, and news. did you hear the one they movie they just? Did you watch today's video that they just put out? Yeah, and, and the and the Yuma, yeah, last. City. Well, they well, I'm d- like we already reviewed it. They're behind the times, man. <laughs> no, we, uh, but unfortunately, I oh, uploaded it a day Kenny. after, so they beat oh, really? it. Yeah, <laughs> we could, we couldn't do that all in a day, folks. Um, we, we got it here first. Well, my oh, internet was down so. yesterday, that's why I didn't get it uploaded. Um, but mm-hmm. they mentioned a movie, Time Addicts, which reminds me of Synchronic. Did you see? Yes, that reminds yeah. me of Synchronic. I was yeah. like, what? Another movie like yeah. take drugs and then you time travel. Yeah, people are like addicted to time traveling, Cameron. It's literally people that use time travel as addicts so like they buy drugs so they can time travel and they jump around to, like, i love it. times i don't know yeah. the premise has i'm very curious to know it's just and i time and addicts. i started kim's video i'm excited to finish it it's really fascinating doctor that looks interesting too yeah. did you did you get it or is it on yeah Prime? i just or... bought both both time addicts and oh kim's video. well i know what i'm watching now so that's yeah. what i'm looking forward to yeah. Not that I don't form my own opinions, but Reddit Media <laughs> finds some really fun movies that they at do. least are intriguing. Yeah. Like, like what was the last one they mentioned? No. Alien in the Forest. Oh, that yeah. That movie no. lasts so hard because they're like, it was funny. They were making a point like how these new auteur uh, directors are making movies like Last Stop in Yuma County, uh, movies like uh, the guy that just did uh, St. Maud, you know, like all these different pulpy movies. And then they're like, and at the very end, they're like, but <laughs> not this kind of pulp, like like these these uh, streaming content movies, like, garbage. Not those, oh. yeah, yeah. Just pumping for content. Basically, but the last two months, people I've been are watching passionate. Garbage. Yeah, yeah. People that are passionate about making movies and and like making movies. Not the sanitized horror movies that we got since Megan. I know why they're doing it. Megan was made money. All the movies it, now have that same feel as yeah, Megan. Literally, it, it, they literally did Imaginary, which was Megan, just a teddy bear instead of a doll. And then it's and they watered did, down. Yeah. It, it, 
I didn't like Vegan. I, I told didn't. you guys this, and you guys were like, eh, it's okay. No, I, I said like, it would have been good rated R, remember? I was sure. like, okay, I thought that was my critique, because I was like, it didn't didn't push any boundaries. It just felt too safe, but... Well, because his first film, Housebound, was rated R. It was so good. Housebound was good. Yeah. Better version of... Uh, well, was it better than Disturbia, or is it worse than Disturbia? Uh, I don't think it's as good as Disturbia. I just thought it was fun. It's a fun really? indie film. I don't, I don't know. know. I'll have to watch those two side by side and be like double feature. That's like a perfect double, <laughs> feature, double right there. feature. Yeah. And then maybe if you're triple throw in rear window for good measure, you're like, here's the three movies who did it best. And then law by or not law by citizen. Um, what's the one with the, the other one with the old man who's. Oh, don't breathe. No, oh, wait, no good oh. citizen. Good neighbor. Good citizen. Yeah. Good neighbor. Oh, no, 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 good, neighbor. Good, neighbor. good neighbor. Good neighbor. Yeah. I knew I it like had something one. to do with like good or law. Yeah. Oh, well there yeah. was. Okay. And then one more, there was the one with the father from Downton Abbey. I don't remember what it was called. And the kid that was in 1917 that's running across the battlefield. Hmm. I'll learn his name. They're like, uh, uh, they break in and they spray paint rich people's homes. And then he like finds that he has like a prisoner in his basement. It's the same thing. It's kind of funny because he's like a politician and you're like, oh, he is an evil, corrupt politician because he literally has someone kidnapped in his basement. But we've seen the movie before, but it had so it was just like a British version of Don't Breathe, I guess. Hmm. That's another movie like, oh, just because he's blind doesn't make it a saint. <laughs> it's going to be like on my bumper sticker, dude. <laughs> just because he's blind doesn't make him a saint, dude. That's oh, my, my gosh. That's my. That's my. <laughs> you're pretty much useless out here freaking Rottweiler runs after <sighs> okay anyway um yeah what else have you guys been watching things you're yeah, looking man. forward to i finally watched war for the planet of the apes and finished that was that the, the third, third one or the one that just the came third, to theaters? that's the third one the third one where and the um it was all right for me the first one is eight out of ten second one seven and then the third one was like a six and then i went and saw kingdom of the planet of the apes <laughs> Last night, the fourth one, and it is the definition of the law of diminishing returns. <laughs> and, um, the Good to like know. the at at the start of it, the world building was so sick because it was like like it starts off generations after Caesar essentially frees the apes, and so it's like this world that's like broken into clans of different like apes, and so like we and they found out how to be racist. That's so cool. <laughs> Wait, and the, so, the, is that the, what it's about? <laughs> anyways. The protagonist is from a clan that like they, they um they're like the hawk clan and so they've learned to like work with hawks and like essentially like train them to where that's like now part of their like their culture and society and it's like a real big part of like um who they are and it like it's just really cool and then um yeah they're like raided by this uh this one clan that is like a gorilla who's like claiming like I'm doing this for Caesar like Caesar would want this and then it's like they like they talk about humans as if they're like some like mythical creature it's so interesting <laughs> and they're like can you believe that we used to like uh like they like there's rumors that caesar was actually raised by them believe it or not because all the humans in this time now are like suppo like supposedly like like monkeys but that was the, also there was and then it just became so it started off it was like an eight out of ten for me and then it like slowly became a six and then it slowly, and then towards the end, it became a five. And then <laughs> as it finished, it became a four. And I was like, it's it's literally just uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, the ending. It's the exact same thing except reverse. So all of the monkeys are eight, or all the monkeys are humans now, and all the humans are monkeys. Yeah. And they're and imprisoning just like, them. And then it's horrific. And they're calling Yeah. And then, and then, like, them. and then there's a Deus Ex Machina where, like, this giant, like, wave, just like the giant, um, whatever it's called um tsunami. avalanche just takes out the oh. people yeah and so there's just this giant like they tsunami break the wave. Dam, and oh, then it just geez. like it destroys and i'm like what is going on um they couldn't use their all, chimpanzee strength and, to just and there was, <laughs> stop the water well there was supposed there was supposed to be like this kind of cool like relationship between like the these two main um people these two main apes and this woman who like wasn't speaking um but then um i'll spoil she it she speaks at the end no she speaks like halfway through the movie like, but she's acting like she doesn't speak. And then she's just like, oh yeah, I can speak. And it's like, what? And she's like, yeah, my mom told me not to speak because it would like endanger my life. And I'm like, what the fudge? I was like, this is the, the whole point was supposed to be the, the, like the humans in the monkey role. And now it's just like, now you're both just talking monkeys. I'm like, this is exactly like the rest of the movies. So I'm like, I don't know. I was just really like yeah. underwhelmed and kind of failed to it, do like, I mean, watch the first one when Caesar yells the word, no, it's like, 
jaw dropping yeah. and it's so good because there's so much weight there because the whole movie it's sign and you've gotten used to it and like they use it for that speaks, punch yeah. and then even like the dialogue so carefully chosen in the second one kova uh, or you know caesar week kova weaker you're like yeah. oh yeah like who wrote this script i'm like it's so yeah. good dude like yeah. like yeah. like kova not ape and you're like yeah man that's justice right there man like it's so amazing and it's very little less is more and now you're yeah. telling me like oh i can speak and then she's explaining why she doesn't speak and you're like yeah okay like you could just tell us all these things sure that's fine yeah like well, rather and, than let us discover it or like have it be a reveal, it's like hey, it's yeah, I, I don't know. I was character just, I, talking with the name. I, I just felt like it was, and when the and when she speaks, it's used as like comedic, and so like she's like witty, like, yeah. And so everyone in the theater was laughing, and I'm like, is this the tone we want to go for for a kid yeah. of Planet of the Apes? I'm like, yeah. do I want to be laughing in this scene? That I don't know. It was just like I felt like there was a lot of conflicting and. My biggest gripe was it the fact that it was two and a half hours. If it was like an hour forty five or like just over like just over two, two like the rest hours. of the war, I'd be like, oh, okay. But I'm like, I just watched two and a half hours for you to get worse, like the longer it went on. Yeah. I was just like, Ugh, what was this? It's too bad. Oh, well, nice. that's what you get for uh, who was it? It wasn't uh, Matt Reeves. Who was the director? I can't remember. It's directed by Wes Ball, who's done uh the Maze Runner. Like, the Maze uh, Runner. Okay. So not that that was a, a compelling. The, the, first, yeah. the first, first one was, was fun. Uh, what about Scorched <laughs> Earth, though? Huh? There's a lot of running in that. That was exciting, huh? When he was oh. running through that tunnel. The kind of movie you go for with all that running. And then um, I also <laughs> I also was watching some of uh, the X Men '97. Okay, Cameron. I apologize. I I was going to talk about that. You, you go though. Jordan's like uh, dropped off already. I, I know I did. Like, I hate it. <laughs> and two thumbs down. It sucks. It, it, it's that's why I, episode I, four and six are garbage. Absolute it, trash. It's just so on brand. Jordan is the king of watching one episode of a show and be like, guys, this is the best show I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, best to episode two. Ever had, and then, man. And then episode two, episodes two is later. He's like, guys, this is literal <laughs> trash. I can't even consume this because episode two was this. so good. It was like on level of. Uh, that time travel one, are they all time travel? I don't know. Synchronic? But the, no, yeah. Days of Future Past. <laughs> Thank you, Days of Future Past. Oh, it, episode two was amazing. So that made it elevated one and three a little bit, and then four garbage, five, eh, six, terrible trash, trash. Seven is like, ugh, and I just like I'm done. I can't do it anymore. And how many episodes were yeah, there? So, there was four, right? Ten. <laughs> yeah, okay. so, uh, You're like, it just kept going. <laughs> sorry, Cameron, for like, telling you to no, watch that. Um, I, yeah. I watched the first three episodes with um, Colton, and uh, we we're not we were not blown away like Jordan was, but we were like, oh, this is like this is this yeah. is enjoyable. Episode so two was like, good. Uh, fine, yeah. Yeah, episode two was good, and so was episode three. Was also I thought episode three was better than two. Oh. Um, because I thought it was, I thought it was kind of clever where it's like a psychological thriller where it's like what is actually real. Don't like watch that. four, Cameron. You will like it'll kill it. Like I was. I mean, it's, a... it's chewing broken glass getting through that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was enjoyable. Uh, it's just all like I've never been a super big X Men guy, so I've never been a super big Marvel in general. We should we should clarify. Mom thought Wolverine was too scary and too violent and too crass for us. But then but he's the best the character. More... Like I wanted then, a Wolverine toy because he had the claws and a cool yeah. outfit. And Mom's like, you can't get that one. You have I like how it. she thought that was too scary. But Ken Professor Barbie Quirrell instead. With... Professor oh, Quirrell Mom. with a literal man face on the back of his head is okay. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, she picks some. Yeah, when we started, they're like, "Lord of the Rings doesn't belong in our house," but they did watch it for date night like two weeks later, and I was like, "What?" Anyway, yeah, Lord um, of the Rings is amazing. I don't know why they don't get then, that movie. I don't know why my kids then, are gonna watch it when they're ten, eight, and then and what five. I'm lo looking, <laughs> what I'm looking forward to is, um, I also. I'm excited for seeing Furiosa with Jordan tomorrow. And yeah, then, let's go. I do want to um, go see that. I'm not is as big on the Mad Max train as either is of you because jo Jordan but loves Fury the Road. And Fury Road is in your top hundred. No, it's not. Oh, I thought it was. I it's thought a it was. Nine. It's a I know nine. it's in yours. I know at, you. At one, you point, and... at one point, I think it was in your top hundred. I could have swore it's oh, never okay. been in my top one hundred. Right, it's whatever. maybe been in my top one fifty. 
but um, I think we got him to admit that he liked it and he didn't like any of the other Mad Maxes. I think. Oh, I know. I know he doesn't like the originals. No, and well, no, I the, understand. The other that. ones were right. hilarious, but that was not yeah. the purpose of them. Yeah, it's like laughing at it. You're like, what is with all this leather <laughs> man? This is insane. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, okay, we. What get is it, the deal with all these? As a thing. Oh my gosh! Now. What is the deal with all these? <laughs> and then um and then i'm also looking forward to watching a tv series with jake gyllenhaal um, on apple plus called presumed innocent and then it's um so jake is a lawyer and apparently i haven't seen a trailer yet i just like recently saw it and it said like it tells a story the lawyer in the florida keys no what it's just <laughs> trying to pull it into roadhouse but anyway oh no no i was gonna go down this road like and there's some weird camera movements and a truck that comes out of nowhere on the bridge dude i i almost want to watch that movie just to see how bad the cgi is i thought you said you saw it you watched roadhouse i just said he wants to watch it again oh you want to watch it again okay sorry i thought you said you want to see it i was like you lied to us you said you already watched it it's just like his brain's finally Ding. Yeah, just, oh. the synapse is just connected. Like, I know. Ah. The, the what, what was the Scott Pilgrim? I get it. Gets it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it says it tells the story of a horrific murder that upends the Chicago pr- prosecuting attorney's office when one of its own is sus- sus- is suspected of the crime. <laughs> suspected. Suspicious. Yeah. And so, um, I mean, I'll literally consume anything that Jake, and that includes the biggest garbage. Have you board. finally finished his all his movies yet? No, dude, uh, I don't. Yeah, how many do you have? Dude, that guy gets work. Think, you gotta get like four. He's saving Brokeback Mountain for for I've, the end. I've, no, he can't watch that one. I know he did, but he's gonna watch I, it again. I haven't at the seen end. October Sky. One that I don't know that I'll ever watch, but I know I have to is Bubble Boy. It just has that same <laughs> feel, and I just it's cursed. I you do need to watch it. I just I I just seen just images from it and I just hate it. I already know I'll hate it the entire. It it also it reminds me of Twelve Monkeys because I've watched half yeah. of Twelve Monkeys. And then me and Colton, like we we started like really late at night, and then we were gonna finish it. Um, I love Twelve night, Monkeys. And, we were and then like, thought it's not worth watching. And yeah, we were like, like uh, maybe something good. else. <laughs> good. I don't know why everyone's it's so good. That I love that clever. movie. It's so good. Yeah, it's, it's but disgusting. I mean, um, the Presumed Innocent with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's uh, it's Apple TV Plus, so it's definitely gonna be like at least good quality cinematography. I don't know that the cinematography will be impressive, but like. It, it, shot it, like an uh, an iphone commercial <laughs> <laughs> oh no, yeah Sorry. but um so I, I don't know i'm pretty excited for that and then i might uh just i'm kind of iffy i'll probably just wait to watch uh x-men until colton gets back but he's in europe for a while and we've also started game of thrones so we're probably gonna prioritize that over yeah well if you do finish x-men i'm telling you skip four and six they they have nothing to do with the show they're side episodes no, I'm serious. I'm not Bottle messing. Episodes. I know, but They're, you're yeah. also the king of hating side quests. So <laughs> you're like, what does this even have to do with anything? <laughs> it's just not like, the main quest. That's kind of the purpose of it being a side quest. I think you would have loved Last of Us 2, Jordan, if you ever tried to play it, right? It's like uh, I don't want to play it. No, I, I know you don't, but I'm saying, did you ever? Did you I, ever I watched it? my roommate play through a little yeah. bit of it and we got bored. Actually, yeah, it was giving me it was making me nauseous. Giant fetch quest, dude, the entire game. Mm. And you play. Don't even get me started on Last of Us, dude. <laughs> That's so sad, too. It's yeah, like video the game first of the year one's so to good, like, yeah. This is part of the Gamergate stuff. If you guys should look this up, it's crazy. Sleeping for people, espionage, uh, lying about reviews, blackmail. It's weird. Like, look it up. Video games are awful these days. So I have a friend that works in an unnamed video game thing. He's confirmed all this stuff. He's like, our game isn't going to sell well. It's going to perform poorly because they put in all this nonsense that no one wants to in their video games, but it's going to fail and we're going to lose so much money. And he's like ma- major layoffs. Like he's worried. Oh, wow. And that's unfortunate because you're like, dude, that's what happens. Like, go because go that's broke, like but... his dream job. Yeah. That's yeah it, it's unfortunate. So like, we'll see. I, I um, hope he has. It's, it's their but... dream job. We're not, we're not saying what gender they are yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's I'll, a girl I'll developer. Yeah. I didn't see girl developer too so her job probably is safe <laughs> yeah. what was that movie <laughs> mythic quest yeah okay wait wait. so Love all you. i wanted to mention Love um, you, Rob McElhinney, but was to cameron already talked about x-men thank you uh the second thing was i wanted to clarify that trailer that ty said was from robert eggers was not it was not it was, a real trailer was ai guys trailer. guys this was an a purely 100 percent innocent mistake on my part guys i hope <laughs> i haven't betrayed the fans 
I you got me so excited. Sinker. Yeah. It was a well-made trailer. It's it the best AI trailer I've seen to date because I can spot a fake trailer yeah. very quickly. This one was the most well done. But it's to harder be fair, to spot them today. There's no, and if it was, I was going to say, I think it was all original AI imagery. So it yeah. wasn't like a lot of super cut trailers. It's so easy for me because I know the movies they're pulling from. So I could spot a fake trailer if I see one or if they're using actors from other movies and other roles to pretend like this is a new movie. This one was just new AI generated images and they were obscure enough and it was quick enough and it listed all the actors' names. Like I believed it. I was like, and there was sure, moving cool. slow enough where you couldn't tell it was an image. Like they did some kind of effect to make it look like it was moving a little bit. Yeah. Well, or even like they could have, you can do AI, uh, not just images, you can do AI video now. Dude. Oh, it's crazy. Okay. Yeah. So it's like it was moving, but it was like very slow. And I was like, oh, like, Robert Eggers, you're nailing the tone with this one. And then I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, I feel bad because I did see some images and I'm like, yeah, not as menacing as the AI generated image, but maybe it's the uncanny valley effect. I don't know. But anyway, I'm like, you got your work cut out for you. If that freaking AI trailer looks better, soon someone's going to be able to produce on their computer a better movie than some of the you most know that AI can't can. make a better movie than Robert Eggers. Well, so that's the thing. I feel like there's going to be like AI whisperers that are going to be able to make the movies that they want to make. And that's true. I think some of them are going to be really compelling. And Maybe. it's going to be kind of a new skill that people need because you could be like, I, somebody, be no, somebody, somebody's and I'd like, be like, yeah, that's cringe, even uh, some, though. Because sure I've been watching some AI stuff and I've watched somebody make one for all of my favorite horror villains. And they're like, these AI images look so much better than the original. I'm like, <laughs> no, they don't. The and I was like, you guys are yeah, but high. You're, Jordan, you're also the king of practical effects and you hate CGI. So Yeah, that's true. It's funny because I watched a video essay about that talking about the thing. Because I know we talked about the thing and then the remake oh. like 2011 or whatever. They do they use more CGI. The CGI took you out of it. But if you think about it, the puppetry looks ridiculous when the guy's like flailing around on him. It's clearly a puppet. But you it know, looked, like, uh, but I uh, I would prefer that because there's people that made it. Like, sure. Know. And but but part of me is like, yeah. But either way, one had a far more gripping story, and the characters were better done. Whereas it's I think true. They rushed Elizabeth Weinstead, but the effects still hold up. <laughs> well, yeah, they do. But again, there's this laughable scene where he's like flailing the guy around. Where he, he does oh yeah, and his legs are kicking. And he's like, yeah, it's it's laughable. It's literally laugh out loud, ah. and it could almost arguably take you out of the movie. But there's enough good meat on the bones that i'm willing to forgive that whereas like the new one it didn't have anything that gripped me i'd still prefer looking point. like like when people fall off a building or something i would prefer a doll falling off and you knowing it's a doll than <laughs> a cgi person going jordan ah! particularly likes the fugitive you know harrison ford doing a somersault and the arm flailing yeah i like fire. that i would prefer that over a cgi guy going like it's just it's i'm sorry i think i think you've been watching um because when that? I Danny went, Cameron, Cameron, yes. Cameron, Cameron, Cameron you dead when the doll falls off the cliff. Yes, I prefer <laughs> that over. I don't. I don't care if I life. laugh, but I. I prefer that in a serious movie than a CGI. And Cameron, I recently because you're like, why did you give such a low review on Taika Waititi's Thor? The CGI doesn't even hold up. I looked at it and I'm like, you can tell it looks like digital art. It's garbage. What? Let's talk what? about that scene where that little kid shows in the sun. Oh man, that was no, weird the, looking. The whole uh, Thor, like the Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, I watched it again, and the CGI Ragnarok does not hold or, up. I don't think it holds up or at all. Love and Thunder. I've watched that like four times. I think it holds up. I don't. I think Ragnarok the CGI or looks Love and terrible. Thunder. Sorry, are you talking about Ragnarok talking or about Love and Thunder? Ragnarok? Ragnarok. 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 Hmm. I'd have to see that again because, to be fair, I haven't rewatched it, and I don't I, know if I, I, ever will. I literally feel yeah. like I'm in, I'm just watching him on a green screen. He's just sitting there. Yeah. Like I don't know. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Every time I watch it, more and more don't like. Um, wait, wait, wait. Like, so, I just uh, last thing. Pissed, bro, that's crazy behavior. Yeah. Okay. Last thing I wanted to mention was so somebody <laughs> wrote and complained about time. <laughs> <laughs> on our the me yeah yeah so he they just all they said was uh dear they listener were, you are banned from the show they they said they were very offended because you said uh you were making fun of barbara streitzan on our episode of what's, what's the doc? what's up doc yeah you were making fun of her on that episode and i I tried to pivot the conversation, but I did write the person and then they thanked me because they said I was very nice to them. But they they, they said they were they so what? they what you they thanked me because I, I, yeah, you, I, said, I you were like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, that's uh, what I heard. They sorry. thanked. Yeah, they thanked me. I heard they, they, and I was like, oh my. All right. Anyways, nice. so yeah, I just, I wrote them and apologized on your behalf. <laughs> Barbara Streisand's the worst, guys. 
<laughs> Matt and Stone and Trey Parker have it right, dude. She's so full of herself, man. She's not even that good. Oh I'm like, gosh. not that good. <laughs> that South Park episode. I forgot about that. Yeah, dude. What? Well, look at the beef they have. They hate her guts. I know. It's hilarious. And it makes me laugh. And you know what? They. She's. She's. Too, she thinks she's too cool for school. She can't take a joke and laugh about I, herself. I know. I and already it, dislike you. Yeah, I know. But it's. It's just the person was looking. She, she's like the guy said. There's just so much negativity in the world, and he was looking for something on the lighter side and then you were just oh and i feel bad yeah if you tuned into the podcast and i was a downer i'm sorry but uh you know some days i have bad days so i'm learning guys i try to stay positive so dear listener it... go f- i don't <laughs> care if you think my opinions are dumb i don't care if you think i'm wrong dude you're banned <laughs> from the show what do you think about that I'm show who's king ty yeah that's right dude. <laughs> yeah, i'm the animal king let's go i'm the animal king <laughs> Right. I'm totally kidding. I love you, dear listener. Le- keep leaving us comments. Tell us where we get it wrong, and I'll try to be better. Uh, I'm doing the work. I'd like to to apologize formally uh, of the entire misogynistic, sexist uh, past that this entire show has. It's funny that they had issue with Barbara Streisand. It must be an actor that this person genuinely liked, because I've dissed women many times on this show before. <laughs> but this is like the one time that... I guess I took it too far. So anyway, <laughs> thanks for sharing that, Jordan. You I love finally it. crossed that line. Now you crossed. Yeah, I, I crossed that. Hey, not my strong oh. hand. Anyway. Oh, dear and I, I also I watched you. season two of Chucky, <laughs> and they oh, exor- they exercise. That's Chucky. still going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I well, I I stopped watching it after season one, but then read that our media talked about it, and so I thought I'd give it another chance. But instead of watching it, I just skipped to the scenes with just Chucky. Because the acting is bad. So, so but, you skip like all the dialogue and yeah, the I'll, setup. And because the, the characters exposition. are so bad. I'm sorry. They're Just horrible actors. Yeah. But the the Chucky scenes are great because they use all practical effects. And so you got the little doll like talking. <laughs> and he is so funny. Oh my gosh. It, and then I it looks so weird. There's like a scene where he's like talking to his doctor, right? He's like sitting in a hospital bed talking to a doctor and his hair's falling out like I didn't even yeah. know what I was looking at. It just it's like Chucky going through a midlife crisis. Like, no, like, oh, like that's the, Santa Claus. And, like, if, honestly, this uh, season so kind random. of, I, I feel like th- th- with the better writer, it could have been more like Rick and Morty because there's millions of different Chuckies and different oh. types of Chuckies. There's like muscle Chucky and there's, um, and he's, no, my favorite Chucky tie is Chucky comes to Jesus and he's like, I'm changed. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> they baptize him. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like he's like, <laughs> he, he like protects the kids and he's like stabbing other Chuckies. It's very good. I think very. you could say Chucky has now officially jumped the shark. Jordan. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 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 so every horror movie franchise is going to get a multiverse theory. So, oh, this Jason Voorhees, this Freddy. I mean, like, I guess they kind of are almost already did with Nightmare on Elm Street. But like, anyway, I'm like, I, I, I. But really we funny. love every you all. Yeah, yeah we, we, we love you all, even if your takes on Barbara Streisand are wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, dear listener. I love I love that you guys give me pushback because uh, I need to be challenged. I need to be here because I am challenged. I need to be challenged and to become better. So I'm going to let the scales of the old bad person and from the ashes, I'll rise again as a new reformed person. So. Love you, dear. If you viewers believe that, then listeners. you're just as dumb. <laughs> yeah, if you believe that, I'm going to change. Yeah, based on a comment. Yeah, you're stupider than I thought, listener. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Cameron, you keep fueling me. You're like, I'm trying to, trying to be better here. You keep pulling. Cameron me knows how to push the roll. buttons. He does. Yeah, you know how to push the levers. Yeah, I love. Uh, I love this collaboration. I love you guys. Uh, this has been Animal King, or this is Future Head Movie Gems <laughs> reviewing Animal Kingdom. We love you lots. Peace, David Mitchell. Misha! <laughs>